Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mona tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to take your designs from Rhino and turn them into a beautiful metaverse world using the Mona platform. Mona is a world building platform built for architects and game designers leveraging their existing 3D workflow. My name is Hard and I'm a metaverse architect with over 10 spaces built on Monaverse. Now before we get started, you need to make sure you also have Rhino 7 and Mona's Unity template downloaded. But don't worry, download links and additional tutorials will be located in the video description. Okay, so let's get started. Here we have a simple gallery space in Rhino with poly surfaces and meshes. It has floors, walls, and curtains, but you can build through a space any way that you want. But once you have a structure that you're happy with in Rhino, I'll teach you how to better optimize, add materials, and then exporting it. While we have this beautifully created space, we would first need to optimize it in order for it to run in the metaverse. And when prepping a Rhino model for the metaverse, you will need to consider its poly count, material count, texture size, and model count. These factors can affect how smoothly a metaverse space runs. For this video, we'll do basic optimization by lowering the poly count. The more complex the space is, the higher the poly count and the slower the space will run. When using architectural modeling tools like Rhino, the poly count is high or heavy. So to lower the poly count, you would need to use a tool called Quad Remesh, which is first introduced in Rhino 7 and can be used to optimize this model. Let's start off by selecting these two curtains and typing in isolate. This way we can just focus on these two objects. Now we're gonna change the view to wireframe. In this view, you can see just how dense each of the meshes are for the curtains. You would have to zoom in to see the grid. And if you look at the details of just one of the curtains, it has over a million faces and vertices. This could make your space run really slow if you have multiple curtains in one space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select one and optimize this by typing in quad remesh. And you're gonna have this little window that gives you all of the default options. And your target quad count might be slightly different but for today, I'm actually going to go with 10,000 for mine, which is only 1% of the original quad count. And I'm also going to select delete and put objects. So that way our original object gets deleted. After you press OK, you're going to see a loading bar that actually shows you how far into the optimization the mesh is. And now that is done, you can see the difference between the left curtain and the right curtain. You can actually see the grid from this distance and see through the curtain versus the right one. And if you change the viewport back to rendered, you can actually see that there's little to no difference between the curtains. So I'm gonna take a moment and quad remesh the second curtain and come back. Okay, so now that I re-optimize both of the curtains, it's time to bring the space back. So I'm just gonna type in unisolate to see the rest of the gallery again. So once this is done, you can actually further optimize your space, but you would actually consider using Blender, a free 3D creation tool, which can be used for optimizing as well. Next, you would need to UV map and add the proper materials in Rhino. UV mapping is a process of applying a 2D image on a 3D surface for added texture. There are many ways to add materials to your space, but today I'm actually gonna show you how to add materials through Rhino. Right now, the model has no materials. And you can see that by clicking on the project and going to material. So you see that there's nothing selected. So what I'm actually gonna do is go to the materials tab and I'm gonna start a new material called physically based. And let me make that again so that that way you guys can see how I do it. So you're gonna have this blank screen and what you're gonna do is select on the plus icon. From this, you're gonna click on physically based. Now, if you go down to detailed settings, you're going to open up this window and open up base color. And you're also going to click right here where it says click to assign near base color. After that, you're going to select on choose for more texture types and select 2D checker texture. The reason why we did a 2D checker texture and so that way we can kind of see how the walls, the floors, and the curtains are being mapped out. So after you do that and create the material, 
you're going to select all of your objects by holding Control and A, and you're going to right click on the material and put Assign to Objects. So you can see how the checkered pattern goes onto each wall surface and on the floors and on the curtains. So if you want to apply, let's say, a tile texture, it wouldn't be super realistic since it would just look like two gigantic pieces of tile on these wall. So what we're going to do is try to scale these checkered tiles so that they all match each other so that the space is more uniform and the materials get added on correctly. So now that we have the materials and the UV mapping set, we can start adjusting the walls so then that way it can actually fit the materials that we really want correctly. So let's start off by selecting this wall here on the right. And under the Properties tab, you're going to go down here to Texture Mapping. Under Texture Mapping, we can look at all the different options. But for now, we're just going to change the type from Surface to Box. And you'll find that this option would actually work in most architectural scenes since most walls are at a 90 degree angle. But of course, you can play around with all the other types as well if they fit better for your project. So right now you can see how this wall has a more chest tile pattern. And this way you can kind of see how your materials that you input later would be distributed across the surface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a step away and I'm gonna readjust all the materials in this scene using this box method. So be right back. So now that the scene is nice and set up, we can actually start to identify which materials we want to add to the scene. So for this, I want to use a concrete material for the floors and the walls. And I probably want to use a nice fabric material for the curtains in the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add and create a new material and create a new physically based material. And I'm going to name this one concrete. And under detail settings, I'm going to open up base color metallic and roughness, as well as bump and normal displacement. And what we're going to do is we're going to get images of materials online, and we're going to assign them to the specific areas for base color, roughness, and bump and normal map. You can choose where you get these materials from, but one website that I love a lot is called Ambient CG. Which, have a which has a resources of a bunch of different materials that you can use. Now I've already downloaded them and extracted them from their zip files. So I'm going to go ahead and click to assign right here for base color for the concrete. And it's going to be in the tutorial materials. And here we have the concrete 4K color as well as the normal and the roughness. So I'm going to here select the color and then under roughness, I'm going to select roughness and then for normal map, I'm going to select normal map. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select all of the objects in the scene. So all the floors, the walls, and we're just going to right click and assign to object. So now if you look closely into the scene, you can see that the walls have this concrete texture to them. So if we didn't do the checkered pattern, the concrete would have just been a gigantic piece of concrete, probably even distorted. So that's the reason why we had to do the checkered pattern. But right now it looks like the concrete is a little too small and you can kind of see the repetitive pattern. So what I like to do is I'm gonna actually try to make these bigger and I'm gonna start off by selecting this wall, going to properties, and under the UV mapping, under UVW repeat, if we increase the size, then it's going to look less repetitive since the texture is going to be expanded on this platform or on this wall. So I'm probably going to increase this by 10. I'm hitting tab 10, tab 10. Let's see if that fixed it. Oops, and I made it smaller. I was supposed to go the other way. So let's change this to 0 0.0. 1, 0.01, and 0.01. There we go. So now you can see it looks a little bit more natural with the concrete at the correct scale. 
this looks a little blurry for me so I probably want to increase it a little bit so I'll probably go 0 0.05 and you might have this problem with a lot of your materials and a lot of your scenes it just kind of depends on your like feel once you actually start to test these things out so I'm gonna go and go back to my front view here and I'm gonna go around and start to apply this UVW UVW repeat to all the materials. Let's see if I can actually do it all in one take. Oh, and I can. Awesome. Okay, great. So now you can see how the entire space now has this nice concrete texture. And the space is kind of starting to come together now. Next, I'm going to add a material for the fabric currents. So again, create new material physically based and we'll just call this one curtain and under curtain we're going to go to detail settings turn on base color and turn on bump and we're going to do the same thing click to assign for base color and we're going to choose this yellow color that i downloaded and under roughness select the roughness and under bump and normal we're going to choose its bump and normal now from here, just going to select both of the currents and let's assign to objects. There we go. Now we have this nice curtain texture on our currents. Sweet. So now that all your materials are set and you're happy with the results, you can now get ready for exporting. Once your structure is ready, you can control A to select all the objects in your scene. And you're going to want to go to File, Export Selected, and you're going to find a location where you're going to be able to find where this item is. You're going to make sure it's in FBX, and you're going to name it something of your choosing. I'm going to name mine Sample. And for the settings, these are the default settings. You can keep it at meshes only. You can keep the export materials as FOM, and you can leave Export Vertex Normals checked export file as version 7 binary and just click OK. So typically depending on what kind of shapes that you have in your scene if you have predominantly rectangular shapes I think that it's fine to have lesser polygons. If you have more circular shapes in your scene kind of like how I have this window I tend to put it in the middle and if you want to have a super high res scene then you can try to increase this a little bit more. I wouldn't recommend going for more polygons since that the quality doesn't really get as much better. It just kind of adds more polys to your scene, which can kind of cause your scene to run a little bit slower. So for this one, I'm just going to keep it at the middle and click OK. And once that's done exporting, which it is, we'll be starting to transfer everything into Unity. You're going to want to open up Unity Hub and just make sure that you have the correct version of Unity installed. You will also need to make sure that you have the latest template for Mona. You can download it in the description. So how to open it is you click on open and you go to the location of where you put the Mona template and mine is here. And you're going to want to open that and select on space starter main. Now it's going to take some time to open up. So we're going to come back once this whole space is open. Now that your Unity space is opened up, you're going to want to go to the top left corner where you'll notice a Mona tab. Click on the Mona tab and click on load space scenes. Next, you can just delete this untitled scene that originally came with Unity. So if you notice, you'll see that you'll have these two spawn points, a portal, as well as directional light and a floor. If you don't know how to navigate through Unity, you can just go by right clicking on your mouse, which will give you this eye, which will allow you to look around. And you can move around by typing in AWSD to move left, right, front and back, and then Q to go down, E to go up. So hopefully that helps you navigate a little bit. I'm going to start off by selecting this floor and actually deleting it. And then what you noticed is that these original people that were here were green and blue, 
because it indicated that they can actually walk on that floor surface. Now, it just if you were to turn on this metaverse space, these people would just spawn and you just start falling from the sky. So we're going to start off by trying to add our project back in, putting materials onto it, and then adding colliders to it. So then that way you can actually test out your space. So let's start off by clicking on add your art here. And then we'll go into the models folder and we're going to right click and go to show and explore. From here, you're going to go back into the models folder and you're going to open up exactly where you found your model that you exported from Rhino. And here is mine. And what I'm going to do is actually control C the sample file right here, go back into the models folder and put control V. So that way I'm bringing the model into Unity. Now you might notice that nothing really happens. So what you need to do is go back into your Unity folder or your file, and then it will start to load your project in. And here you can see the gallery space and you'll see some information such as the model and you can change like the scale factor, any of these settings that is embedded into the project. If there's any rigging, animations that came into the project, or any materials. So you'll actually see the two Rhino materials here as concrete and curtains. But we'll actually have to recreate these materials in Unity and reassign them to the model. And you'll see that in a second. So what you're going to do is grab your model and drag it into this space location. And if you see, none of the materials came with the model and it's just pure white. So we're going to go to add your art here again. And instead of the models folder, we're going to go into the materials folder, open this up, go back into the materials folder. And I'm going to take all of the images that I use to create the materials along with an HDRI image that I'll be using. And I'll be control C and control V to copy and paste it into this materials folder. And just like our gallery, we have to go back to Unity in order for it to update. Okay, so now you see all of our materials or all of our images here. And Unity is a little bit different where you can't just grab your images and start dropping them onto your files. And you can't just select your files and just select these images. What you'll actually have to do is create a material. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Note that textures from these external sites are in the powers of two. This is required for optimal use in game engines like Unity. When making your own textures, this should also apply. So 64 by 64 through to 2048 by 2048. Do note that textures play one of the biggest parts in file size. So keeping these as low as possible is very important to keep your space under the 180 megabyte file size limit for a space. It's possible to adjust the size of the texture in the inspector here. While we're at it, we need to make sure that the normal map is set correctly as a normal map. So we're going to select both of our normal maps. And this can be done in the top of the inspector here. You're going to click default, change this to normal map, and click apply. Otherwise, the normal won't look correct. After that, we can drag and drop the textures into a material. So first, let's create a material by right-clicking in the project window. Select create and select material. And we're going to name this concrete and we're going to do the same thing Click create material and we're going to name this curtains then we can drag and drop the albedo and normal maps into the respective slots so here and here and let's do the same thing for the curtains here and here okay We'll leave the metallic and the smoothness out as Unity uses individual texture channels for the metallic and smoothness, whereas the textures taken from most external sites are just roughness textures. If you want more information about materials, you can look at the materials doc listed below. But for today, we can just use the sliders to adjust the metallic and smoothness sliders to a level that suits your target material. So I'm just going to crank this up to around 1.1. 
five should be okay. And it just changes to point one five. That's close enough. And then now we can just apply our material by dragging them into the scene. Or we can go to our model and assigning the materials to where they belong. And here you can see the concrete has a material slot and the curtain has a material slot. So we're just going to apply those. Now that you've applied materials to your scene, now you will have to add colliders for the floors and walls so that people can run and walk around your space. A collider is an invisible component that defines the area of physical collisions. And the collider doesn't need to be the exact same shape of the object's mesh. It just needs to be a general approximation so that your character in the metaverse knows that it needs to bump into specific objects. If you didn't have a collider in this wall and you were to play this scene, then a player would actually just be able to run through this wall. So they would be able to see it, they just wouldn't be able to interact with it. So what I'm going to do is show you how to add a, a simple collider. Box colliders are recommended for this since it's the most efficient one. So what I'm going to do is select this wall here. I'm going to add component and I'm going to type in collider and I can just select box collider. And you can see that this wall now has this green outline, which means that this box collider took shape of this wall. So that was actually quite easy for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and select colliders for the rest of the scene. And I will be right back. All right, so now that you can notice the whole scene has colliders around it. So that means that players, when they get spawned into the project, can now walk and run around the project site. One more thing that I'm going to start to adjust is the environment. If you look around Unity, it gives you this default blue sky and gray ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an HDRI image that I got from Unity called Epic Bright Sunset. And you can see it's right here. And what it's going to do is basically wrap this image around the scene. And you can kind of see how much of a difference this makes to the project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Create. Go to material and we can just call this skybox and you're going to change the shader to skybox and change it to qmap now what we're going to do is we're going to take our image and you can use any image that you want and you can also find images for hdris on ambient as well so what you're going to do is take your image and you're going to change the texture type to Actually, you're actually going to leave it to default and you're going to change the texture shape to cube and you're going to click apply. And what is this going to do is going to change your image from a regular flat image to like a three dimensional cube. And we're going to be able to input this new cubed image into your skybox material. Once this is ready, you'll see how much of a difference a skybox makes to your metaverse space. So be wise on what kind of image or what kind of feel you want your space to have. All right, so now that this skybox is ready, you'll see how big of a difference it makes. So all I'm gonna do is drag this new skybox material and drop it in here. And if you take a look, it also changes the lighting of your space a lot. But just imagine, like look at this beautiful sky now compared to what it was before. It just adds so much more life to your scene. And then if you want, you can also edit the lighting to be a little bit more brighter by clicking on the lighting. And you can change the intensity to maybe two. I think this probably fits the scene a little bit better. Feels super bright in here. And lastly, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bake the lighting. So you go to window and you go to rendering you go to lighting and i'm just going to generate the lighting okay 
should be done since it wasn't super complicated. And after your space is ready to go, so you feel like this space is ready for you, you can start to test it out by creating playground files. So now that you have this basic model with colliders and assigned materials, you're now ready to easily test out your space. You can do this through the web browser. To test your space, go up to the top of the screen and click on the playground button. The playground files will then be created and the file location will pop up on your screen along with the Monaverse playground web browser page. What you would do is select your playground files and just drag it into the screen. Once that's ready, you'll be able to run around and test out your new Metaverse space. So now you can further customize your space in Unity or create a very detailed, beautiful world that you can enter with others. You can also mint and sell these on the blockchain. So congratulations, you created your very first Metaverse space. To learn more or get 24-7 live Metaverse support, join our online community on Discord or Twitter. It's a great place to just hang out and meet other architects, builders, designers, gaming developers, and the Mona. If you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.